we were fine. I see me. Do you see you moving? I see me moving. So. And I see me moving. And my internet is good. On air. Now we're on air, but I still don't see you. I see you switch that. Yeah. Uh, they're segmented off the Wi-Fi. The wi that is true. We did the responsible thing. I did it before. Should I try using Wi-Fi? Yeah, do that. The thing is, the wire connection may be separate from the wireless one. Oh. They they, they, I'm guessing he segmented the users. You know what? Their own. I mean, that may be a possibility. I might be be blocked because I plugged in and I'm not on Wi-Fi, and so for oh, the fine. video might be blocked. It may be smart enough to pick one or the other. The internal network here, which is what you're on right now, may not see the wireless network that all the people are on. You might have to choose one of our. We have a few networks open. You might yeah. have to choose one. I chose. Yeah, that, that one will work. That's cool. Yeah. Yep, yep. That'll work. There. Okay. Yeah, it must have been. Uh oh. Now I can't hear you. There. There, there you we... are. Okay. My issue was the wired network was blocking the video. Okay. So I am not on a wired network anymore, and I got video. Do you want to just come around this table and we'll just. Do you want to move up here? We can all learn how to do that. Yeah, yeah. We are going. I have no idea. Um, I need to. If you want to be in the view. You need audio. You can. I plug in there. I will need audio. I don't need it right this second. Oh, I'm assuming it works. It was three of us. No. If I run that, Jennifer, can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me? Hello? Hello. You still hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, it gets to get my hair on. I guess we can do it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Number 113. And she was saying I'm going back. There was another laptop in there. Essentially, when you have a big hangout, you have to have a Google Plus account. <laughs> and you can um, send it like an invitation out for other people. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I've used it in my classroom where we were in our classroom. I wanted the parents to do a video stream. I just want to do it like this the Google Hangouts on air, and you just create your broadcast. So I can start breaking through this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they could, but then it archives it to YouTube, and then you can share it on So it allows that live view, and it allows the archive to And we'll be able to this call So just be like, if you and I want to play on our lessons for the weekend, you and I could connect. Nobody has to watch it, it's just you and I. It's like FaceTime. Mm -hmm. It's like FaceTime. But you could have several people. Right, this one is Google on here. But this allows you to have lots of people. So we've collaborated around the state with educators and talking about things. And it is neat because you feel like you're in a meeting even though you're in all different places. So how do you get to this? Can you go on the computer? I clicked on my so I click on that. And then it was in the tone. I can have all of these things. So I didn't. Otherwise, you could just do a new hangout just for the one to one. So the home had hangouts on there. And that would be just a hangout. This is the 21st learning. 21st century learning symposium in St. Clair, it's in Marysville High School, but it's the St. Clair Risa. So there's educators from all over. And um, they're um, going to watch a little bit of the documentary. Like I'm oh, goodness. <laughs> 
<laughs> and this is our educational technology director oh. for the Michigan Department of Education. As you can see, a very new rule. Man. New rule: you can't present if you're not going to show up because I don't get to see you really. I mean, uh, where were you at the mixer last night? I know. I was, in, I was there. I drove. I was up till one o'clock in the morning chatting with my aunt. Drove at seven. I chased him over. I, I told my wife I was going to be a good husband and be home every night. Starts for class, so okay, and then they're gone. Good. They were gone till nine o'clock. The whole family. Oh, well, you kept your promise. That's what's important. I laid down. She was gone. To be, to be here tonight. Well, we didn't have karaoke or dancing, so you might not have had so much fun. <laughs> the karaoke, for sure. All right. You go to like the fun ed tech, ed tech conferences. It really is. They have a lot of fun social events. The karaoke is a popular choice. Last night there was a mixture of the presenters from this conference. And All right. Well, you can use this. Yeah, I would probably do the other year's classes. Yeah. Right. So you teach ESL? I teach ESL. Okay. Hey, Jennifer. Yes. We're going to okay. start. I'm going to plug you okay. into the speaker here. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, I am Alex, and, and this is Jennifer Bond, and Jennifer is in a session in, I'm sorry, this is here, right? This is here. In Goldman, her ed tech conference. And, uh, we're can you put your speaker on? Can you put your speaker on? Oh, sure. Your, your no, sure. microphone. Microphone. Is that better? Yeah, that works better. Thanks, Bruce. Um, I did a film with Bruce Umstead, who's the tech director for the state of Michigan. On um, it's called Look I'm Learning, and it is a film that helps communities understand what technology looks like and feels like in a classroom, elementary, basically focusing on uh, kindergarten through fourth grade. And Jennifer was one of the teachers that we highlighted in the film. And um, she couldn't be here today because she's doing her conference. But we have decided to do concurrent sessions. So they're doing a session in Wild Lake right now as we do this session. And Jennifer, you can pipe in. Go ahead and turn, introduce yourself and talk about what you're doing. All right. Um, my name is Jennifer Vaughn, and I'm a third grade teacher at Glengarry Elementary. And um, we have our technology conference here in Wild Lake that is ran by teachers. So we have 50 sessions here. So I had to be part of my district today, but I also want to be a part of the 21st Century Symposium, so I thought it would be a good way to kind of expose Google Hangout as a tool to sometimes meet the problem when you can't logistically um, meet with each other, but then also to showcase bring your own device and um, ways you can use these tools in your classroom. And I have some educators from Wild Lake that are joining me to learn a little bit more about Google Hangout through the process. So uh, what we thought we would do is you can show a piece of the film, and then after we can do a current. Hey Jennifer, could you turn your mic off? Thanks. Um, we could do a concurrent Q and A, and um, just kind of set it up the way Jennifer does it when she does Google Hangouts in her classroom. So whoever on her side. Uh, decides to pose a question, they can come up to the computer and ask it so they can hear it in both words and in both rooms. And then we can kind of get a group conversation going in both rooms. Does that sound good to everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, Jennifer, I think uh, we're going to share the film. I'm sorry. I <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll hook back in and do a conversation. Sound good? All right. Work for everyone? All right. Well, I am going to plug this in and I have to switch over. I'm going to leave Jennifer on board over there. 
let's see if this works. All right, and we are going to share a bit of the film with you. Tom Johnson of our Mason Lake Oceana ISD and actually mentioned it to Mary Jo tomorrow who is our tech director here at the Lighton School and they had a conversation and said you know what do you think about uh, an iPad type uh, tablet at a kindergarten or first grade or second grade our laptop in the hands of a kindergartner would keep me up at night. It's just, it's too fragile. I think we can do everything that they need to do or want to do on a the tablet. They're great for little fingers. You know, just the fact that you touch something instead of having to move a mouse, they're just a great device for kids. When she told me about the idea, I first thought she was a little bit nuts. <laughs> I thought, is she sure that she wants to put iPads in second grade? Why not give them to our high schoolers? iPads are amazing. They're, they're like these tiny computers that you can use for anything. Um, we took our iPad home and we um, we got to show our brothers and our sisters. I'm going to show my wiki off. I'm going to show my password, my username, and I'm going to show off all my tricks. Well, it's like this. We got to stick them on our top of our deck. And why don't you say, okay, pick them up. Or you could just flip it open, um, press a button called your home button, because it will take you to your home page, and you just slide this little arrow, and then, voila, all the magic happens. Of all the kids, why would you try it at that level and not at the high school level? You know, they're preparing for college. What are you thinking? And then, you know, word got back that they were bringing them home, you know, and, and that's when my husband and I said, okay, we're going to take an active stance here. We are not in favor of this. And, you know, what was such a negative thing, I mean, you have to, you have to experience it to appreciate it. And even then, you still don't appreciate it. It's, it's the most amazing teaching concepts, piece of equipment, whatever you want to call it. it. I mean, it is going to be life changing for the kids in the 21st century. Some people were very apprehensive about giving five-year-old technology and, you know, why not the junior high and why not the upper elementary or the high school? And I say that it's obvious that kindergarten is the foundation. You have to start while they're young and expose them to this technology and just because they're five and just because they're in kindergarten doesn't mean that they can't succeed using technology. We see a lot of stalling in school districts, the larger school districts, because the, the layers of politics are overwhelming and they're paralyzing. And the beauty, the beauty in Ludington is that two teachers turn a light on, a light that you couldn't deny. And that just cleared the way. Kids have found more 
ability and attitude than, than we give them credit for. It always amazes me when you look back at uh, the historical figures. So you have people at the age of 15 who are kind of admirals in the Navy or, you know, or achieving extraordinary things in business. And, and I don't say that because I think we should go back to it. But there is a, always a risk, I think, of, uh, of infantilizing people, of not seeing what they're really capable of. And young children are often very insightful and very practical. And people on the whole respond to the challenge that you present them. And it, what interests me is the technology is putting tools into the hands of people, which they show a tremendous natural aptitude for. <laughs> Lincoln Elementary School District is a small bedroom community. We're approximately four square blocks. Over 90% of our students are receiving free and reduced lunch, which means we're very high in poverty. I think we all agree poverty matters, but because you are a person of poverty doesn't mean that you're limited forever. And that truly, the use of technology is more in people lives. It creates that level playing field for all of our students. Because in most schools, we see a lot of technology. Those are the school districts that have a uh, high tax base. So if we make it available for our kids on a daily basis, we hope to decrease that gap, that achievement gap, for both the just as important as the achievement gap that availability gap, where students have those resources so they can begin to implement and use it. If you have the core group of teachers that are willing to jump out front and work with other staff to make this happen, any school can do this. Even without one-to-one, -one, it's still possible to do this. But it's that idea of bringing in the leaders and the people that have the desire to do this. And that's that's the big trick. We wouldn't work without the collaboration. Because there's no way, you know, if we sit around and hear of someone talk about how to use the tablet and we just do it, we have to work it together at our own pace. So say a guy can walk into a classroom and say, hey, I'm going to give you a tablet, I'm going to give you a document camera, and I'm not just going to say, hey, here's this latest technology, I got a grant for and bought it. It's the idea that I can go in there and say, this is how you can use it to enhance, you know, enhance your losses. We can preach to our staff all we want to. The importance of uh, having kids being the digital natives that they are and working with the technology and multitasking. But when staff members can actually see, hear, and interact with their colleagues who are doing it, it carries a whole lot more weight than what we may think or say is a philosophy. I always tell my students, the things you're learning now, I've never had a chance to learn in school. And you're going to be so far beyond you. You're going to be creating and inventing and making websites and just going to have so many job opportunities I've never had because of the experience you're having today in class. It does mean a lot to my son because other years he would say, oh, well, only three kids to use a computer at a time, certain days. Because I can now, I get to use mine every day. It's going to teach him more than I could probably teach him because we don't have one at home. Students are no longer just receptive to someone staying in the front of the classroom and just kind of lecturing to them for the entire period. Kids like to get around, they like to move around, touch things, play with things, see the application. What other better way can you see the application than with the technology itself? It really presents real world learning activities for our students. What we talk about, they're seeing in action, they correlate that to what they see outside of the school out. It's sometimes difficult as a teacher to let go of that control. Teachers like to be in charge of what goes on in their classroom. You want to say, you're on page two, do one through seven, that's the end. But giving them that autonomy, letting them do it on their own. I, I used to be like a big stickler about a quiet classroom, and I wanted a quiet classroom as a boring classroom. Kids will probably sleep in a quiet classroom. So we need to be up and awake and communicating and talking and getting involved and getting engaged and not just sitting there. That's been a struggle for me as a teacher. Like, let them, it's okay if they're talking. They may be answering questions. Let them have it. Let them go. Using the document camera, the students come up and they play teacher. They show me of the rest of the class. This is how I solve the problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just enhanced that idea of 
you know, in order to learn some things, you have to be able to teach it well to someone else. It's just about exposing the kid to a different way to express their learning. A different, like a different kind of book. It's a different way of doing something. The thing is, they are though just tools. Technology in the end is just about the making and design of tools. If you look at a music club full of instruments, they're just tools that they won't themselves compose or play simply. It takes great people to do that. It doesn't replace um, the kind of things they would do with paper and scissors and crayons. It's just another media. Another media for them to express themselves, another media for them to share their stories, share their thoughts. Interact with others, and that's what we talk about at the end of the day. What'd you learn? What'd you do today that was different? You have it, you know, how are you going to take that into tomorrow? What are you going to do with what you've done? Not just, you know, oh, I played skip, but what did you do on skip? You know, what, what made it so meaningful for your learning today? When it comes to assessments, using all this technology has made data collecting of assessments so much easier. The teacher doesn't have to take as much home to grade because the digital assessment grades are formed. The ability to do things such as tagging questions with standards that we're looking at, or just key concepts, and to go back at the end and even be able to tag the students with different you know, ability levels. We can now look at and say, well, we taught both of these concepts, and it automatically is giving us the data. This standard that kids are scoring 95% on, this standard is scoring 45%. We now know what still needs to be retaught and revisited without necessarily beating the dead horse of that standard we're already hitting. And it's also allowing us to look at our students. Is there a group of students that's not getting the information compared to others? And then that way we can address different learning needs and different abilities. But a teacher can have access to a dashboard of progress and track each one of their students. So they can see every lesson, they can see every day who's succeeding, who's falling behind, who may need some more additional help. And it's not waiting till the end of the day. It's not waiting till the end of the grading period. And then we find out that little Johnny has fallen behind. It's lowering frustration. It's raising engagement in class. And the students are more interested, where it's not the kid in the back of the class who just sits there and goes, well, I didn't get it. They don't care. So why I should just stop to now they care about me because they're addressing what I'm struggling with now. When students are engaged, they only show them the teaching and learning process. You know, if you're willing to try, and they've got that confidence that I can, as opposed to doubting yourself. And that's all you really want. <laughs>
that student may be teaching other students, but the, and the teacher kind of becomes a collaborator learning, which is actually a really interesting role for teachers. They're modeling what it feels like to be a learner. They're learning along with students, and, and the more we have teachers very comfortable in that role of learner as well as instructor or teacher, um, that that will be in this kind of new sort of technology enabled all learning environment. That first, I just taught and then reinforced with the iPad. And then as the year went on and the kids increased their skills, I said, oh my gosh, this is a creation device. They're able to write on here. They're able to record their voices. I can take their stories and make class books. And it was really anything that you could do in the classroom. I thought about how, to, how am I going to use this on the iPad? Which one? You know, we are still doing traditional things. You know, kindergartners are still using paper, pencil, and crayons. We're still looking at books that are, you know, real hardcover books. Um, I think just technology has just enhanced the learning because they're able to have more opportunities. With kindergarten, you know, they're still learning their name. They're still learning how to write their letters. And, you know, we're forming words and writing sentences. So at the beginning of the year, I really have the parent support with the um, blogging of their high frequency words, and then as the year goes on, at the end of the year, we were blogging in class. Um, kids are still had reached the point where they were able to form a sentence, you know, on the keyboard and type that up. The fun run is tomorrow. I am so excited. I have learned over one For five-year-olds to be sitting in a group and having an educational conversation about their writing or how they're using this math app to help them add or help them subtract is an awesome way because you know, if you just gave them a worksheet, they're not going to have any communication about that. They're not going to be excited about a worksheet. But this way, they're collaborating. They're working together. They're working as a team. 100 takeaway 70. I'm doing a small group with my reading group. I can rest assured to know that my students that are not with me working one-on-one -on -one are learning things the correct way, and I don't have to worry about them. A lot of people talk about the look and the feel of the classroom will change. And in many cases, it may look and feel very much the same, especially in young grades when students are actually and always have been very active learners. They have learning centers. They move around the classroom. They're working with each other. There's a lot of talk going on. That is the kind of environment that we would like to see at all levels. And we're going to be completely surprised where this is going to take us. But it's definitely going to take us in a really good place. And it's a place that uh, children will not be bored. They're not going to be bored if left to their own devices, literally. They, they can actually show us uh, where, where they're headed. Initially, I was trying to think about how I could run this program and how they might be using the classroom. And at first, I just thought, okay, I can stick them in the centers. I can use it for this small group time or this whole group time. And then it became really clear that this was going to be a device that I could use all day. So I tried to stay away from iPad time. I didn't want iPad time. I wanted the iPads to just be integrated into every subject, every area, whether it's looking up a word on our dictionary app or using it to annotate over uh, PDFs in, in assignments or sending notes home. I wanted it to really be a resource for everything. I'm really excited to get them logged into our wiki for the first time. Our wiki is our classroom filing cabinet, and it has everything that our classroom is about on it. And so I'm looking forward to getting them introduced to that and seeing that there's this whole world out there that they can explore and that has all their spelling words and vocabulary words and um, everything on it that they'll need to have a successful year. As a teacher having an iPad, it has really changed the way I teach. It, it's really made me reflect on how I teach and it, it's made me want to engage my students as much as possible because the iPad is such an engaging tool. I try to direct things there as often as I can. But if they're engaged, they're learning it much faster and much, in a much higher quality way. So it's really, really made me stop and reflect on how I teach. And it's made me become more of uh, the backseat teacher. I'm, I'm not standing up in the front of the room all day, every day, directing, directing, directing. I get to just kind of sit back and let the learning happen after a few minutes of instruction, and then off they go. This is an exciting time to be a teacher. And uh, we see many teachers who have given more flexibility and more freedom to teach in this more authentic way, to do project-based learning. 
to work with small groups of students. Uh, it's not so much the technology knowledge that matters. If, if teachers are conversant with technology, that's great. But if you're a teacher who hasn't really used technology much in your own teaching, this will be an exciting time for you. If you take up a new role and a new identity, that you can be a learner too, that your students can also help teach. <laughs> If it was easier to connect with kids bringing ice cubes in the classroom or something, I don't care what it is, I would do it. The best teachers do it. Um, for goodness sake, why would we tell a kid that the way you communicate, the way you collaborate, uh, the way that you uh, have critical thinking, and everything you do outside these walls, you can't use them here. And then we ask him to, to, to adopt 21st century skills, which are the four C's. They do outside, they just don't inside. And so what happens is, if we, if we continue this, the percentage of learning that's taking place inside a school building will continue to shrink. The pendulum for learning will continue to be still. But we can choose to, to, to move that and get that, 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 that curiosity to learn moving again by allowing them to do what they're doing outside our buildings already. They're already learning out there. Throughout this year, I've had kids, if they want to bring in a device, they are allowed to. As long as it connects with their learning, they can't um, just play games on it. When I first found out that they would be allowed to bring their own devices and using all this technology, I was nervous about letting my daughter bring my Kindle. That's my email, that's my Facebook. So I was a little nervous about that part of it all, but it worked well. She's more excited about learning, which is definitely a bonus. Um, she has struggled in the past, and this year I haven't seen any of it. I was um, going on my, um, my little Acer and I was writing a script for my sock, sock puppets. There was like a crayfish and a Madagascar hissing cat brooch. And then um, on the bottom, I took a picture of my crayfish and then I put it on there. whether they're doing art, telling digital stories, creating their own movies, incorporating their own photographs, whether they're using an application around mathematics or social science or language arts. I mean, there are so many technologies that lend to consistent learning. And I was excited that we are able to do the sock puppets as well as um, taking the quiz on that moto. So it's nice to have an app that um, can be utilized on any device. And I think, you know, those types of um, apps will just make it more successful in the classroom because you can truly bring your own device. I like trying different devices and different things on them. You can learn reading, writing, science, anything. Almost anything. I actually prefer when I can just um, jump from, you know, one group or one child to another to um, kind of individualize what their needs may be. And today with the science, you know, I was, you know, editing on the Diary of Crayfish blog to helping child log in, discussing, well, you didn't save it, you didn't push the right button. So it's just a multi-focus with whatever that need was at the time. I love technology. It's just a whole bigger level of learning. We do Diary of Crayfish sometimes on the computer. You just um, post it online and people get to read it on um, what the creators did today. We need creativity in school, we need the arts in school, we need time to communicate, we need to, time to delve into projects and make them meaningful. Memorization, filling in bubble tests, hopefully it will be a thing of the past. And where we're going is going to be a place where uh, kids will be able to be co learners, diving in deeply making the work that they create meaningful. And hopefully, um, the work will move the world to the right place. Technology will definitely be part of your future. And in college, you'll be using it a ton. And in your workplace, I'm just by nature a very, like, I'm a large risk taker. And I am creative. I'm um, one of those teachers that if I have an idea that pops in my head, I'll just go full forth with it. And sometimes you're going to have bumps and bruises along the way, but for the most part, I've had an enormous amount of success with some of the risks that I've taken, especially in technology. Hello, Lieutenant Governor. How are you? 
Good. It was our first Google Hangout, and the Google Hangout was completely new to me, so there was a little ounce of, oh, I just, I'm confident that I can do this. I just need to understand the nuances of the Google Hangout. We did on um, Google Hangout. It's just a little thing, kind of like Skype, but there, but there could be more people on it. We talked to the lieutenant governor, and um, they all had questions to ask them, and mine was, how long is your work day? It varies depending on the day, but it's not unusual for me to start somewhere around 7.30 8 o'clock in the morning. I was very um, pleased with the manners of the children saying thank you for taking my question. Well, no two days are the same. We have a lot of variety, a lot of different things that happen. And you know, overall, it's a really fun job. They're having their social studies benchmark assessment this afternoon, and hopefully some of those things will impact their understanding of Michigan government. What has been your favorite film task? So, seeing, I'm going to just stop it here. And we can, I'm just going to bring this over and we can talk to Jennifer. Okay. Does that work with you guys? And we can just kind of get around in a group and talk to her about what she's doing. Hey, Jennifer. Hello. Hi. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Do you guys want to just gather around? Does that make sense? I'm just going to have everybody kind of gather around. And you can, do, you can ask me or Jennifer. Here, come on. Slide in. And we can uh, slide the computer around as well. Okay. You can see. <laughs> you gotta squeeze if it's gonna work. Everybody's gotta squeeze here. Squeeze. You sit right here. In there. Does that work, Jennifer? Yeah. All I right. I shut the door though. We have um, summer school. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Get it all worked out. So, Jennifer, mm -hmm. so when you did this in your class, you used like two cameras, right? When you have the kids do it. So when we do Google Hangout, I have um, the image being projected on my, you know, like my board, and then the webcam is um, on our. Either sometimes I'll have it my laptop webcam or I'll have like this webcam. If it's a one-on-one -on -one where kids are um, maybe just conversing with another person or if you're as a teacher just doing a one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes it's best to have the headphone with the microphone and then it um, eliminates the background feedback that you have that you probably have heard. So yeah. the kids will have their eyes usually on the projector and I'll put it in front of them. We might put it on a chair where kids can um, gather on the carpet. And But if it's just projected out to our classroom at the desks, I'll have the kids come up forward and I'll be close to the computer. Got it. Do you guys have any questions for Jennifer? What are some examples of the way you use Google Hangouts? Um, last year I had Innovation Day where like the Genius Hour or the um, FedEx Days where kids can just have the entire day to work on um, something that like a passion project and we used the Google Hangouts on air to record and send out a live feed with um, all the things we were doing to the parents so the parents could check in and I gave the parents the set times that we'd be going on air live and then the kids would come up and talk about what they're doing and a lot of times we just let it have open air time where I just kind of made the um, camera pan the class so they could see kids working and the neat thing about that is when you do the Google um, Hangouts on air it can allow you to put it right on YouTube immediately so it records it for you and you have that archived and then I put it on one of my websites so the parents could see it. But we've also had author visits 
I mean, a lot like what you would do with Skype. We'll have author visits, and um, we're doing the global read aloud this fall, and we'll connect with different classrooms. And this is a, it's more user friendly than Skype as far as allowing multiple classrooms to connect. Hey, Jennifer, when you did your thing with the lieutenant governor, did you talk about how you work with them ahead of time, invest it, and set it up? That's what I was just telling um, the teachers here in Wild Lake is that you always have to be expecting that there's going to be a little bit of a glitch. And that glitch can sometimes be the audio or it could be the video. Um, it could be the wiring. But it is always nice to kind of check in ahead of time. Um, with the lieutenant governor, he has an IT team that I met with like two days prior to the Google Hangout. And we got everything set up to make sure that it was a good connection. And then um, had it organized as far as like who's going to call who. Sometimes that's an element that you have to figure out, like who's going to invite and who's going to set it up. And um, just kind of deciding the flow. Um, if you have sometimes with kids, if I'm having them have set questions, we'll write the questions out on cards. And it will be already prescribed who's going to come up. Sometimes I'll just have a train of kids, and then they just take turns and come up. And once they're done asking their question, they go back and sit down. We have the next one. Um, but it's you just have to be flexible. And as far as working with third grade, 15 minutes um, is about the max as far as attention span that I can get from them to focus, which is strange because they have a higher attention span. But I, I don't know what it is about it. But Throughout the years when I've done Skype and everything, 15 minutes is about the max as far as holding the attention of the whole group. You know, the, the other thing I thought that was really interesting, um, I put a texture in touch with Jennifer in terms of coming to visit her classroom to look at BYOD. And Jennifer invited her to come by Google Hangout because so she didn't have to physically go there to visit. If she couldn't answer it, have you done more stuff like that, Jennifer? No, but I have a like I I'm open to it this year because I know just logistically, you don't really need to pay you know anybody to come and you don't have to observe a classroom in another district and take the day off and have to do sub plans. You can just kind of click in and see how a teacher is running the classroom as long as they're open to it. Um, so hopefully I'll have I'm open to having anybody hang out. Just watch. You said multiple classrooms. How can you connect at one time? Is there a limit? I think it's nine, but what happens is the thumbnails down below the main screen get smaller. Or what happens is, and I think they have to mute their microphone. It gets a little bit hard because it, Google can't figure out who's talking. So I think I would probably only stick with like four. Four or five, probably. But it has the potential, I think, to go up to nine. Anyone else? That's why we're not talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Yeah. How to get it all Did I just miss my lockdown? Yeah. Jennifer, can you talk a little bit about how you set it up and how to get your email address and go over the basics? <laughs> Well, um, when you go on, you have to have a Gmail account, and you have to have the Google Plus. And on Google Plus, that's the, on the far left-hand side. I could try to screen share, but it's weird when it does it. I can explain it to OK, OK, maybe you can do hands-on, because that's. It, it works best if you work with somebody like Jennifer who knows what they're doing, because mm -hmm. she actually trained how to do it. But you have a Gmail account, and then across the top, you have all those different choices. And what you talk about is Google Plus. Plus is to, to Facebook. You can have your circle and things like that. But Google Hangouts are once out of that Plus account. So you actually have an account with your Gmail for that. But you do have to go through the process of making it live. Right? So you have to go through the process of making Google Plus live. And then you add people to your the circle. Right, so that's your Facebook getting people in a circle. And then inside of that circle, you can do um, launch a hangout. And invite. And then once you have that, it, 
you can also launch it out of your Gmail or any of the other Google apps that you might have. And it works on a, there's an iPad right. Google Hangout app. That you, not just Jim, there's a specific Google Hangout. I can show you. Okay. Something. It looks different than that. It's a Google Hangout, and you do it from your phone. Android, there's an Android app as well. Uh, it's pretty simple. It, it is good to, the first time, do it with somebody who sets it up and invites you, okay. but it's not that hard to do. Um, I just, here, the Google, it's called Hangouts. It looks like that. I've got that on my computer. Mm -hmm. I started to play with this just last week and on my computer, but um, I was just not sure how to do the circle. Like, you have to add them in first before it starts. And they have to have a Gmail address. So everyone has to have Gmail. I think that's yes. the deal, that everybody has to have a Gmail address. And the app is called, it's just um, Hangouts. Hangouts? Okay. Yeah. So obviously it's easier to launch it off of an app that's designated just for that. And it, I mean, it was a little clunky for me when she first, you know, got me in um, to a Google Hangout. But it's much a lot like Skype. It's a lot like Skype. And you know, I mean, I noticed just being in Jennifer's classroom, and you do have to organize it a little different. When I had it set up in front of the room, and then I had my back to it, and it was a little bit weird. That. You either have to do the two camera thing like Jennifer does, where she flips it around when she's speaking on her, and when the kids come up, she can flip it around to the classroom, or you just need to get everybody to squeeze in, and like we're doing now. It's the forethought of, you know, exactly how it's going to look on both sides. We were just talking um, ahead of the time, and I hadn't really thought about it in this way, but we have lost our video streaming capabilities um, with the networking. And we used to have an elementary um, news broadcast every morning. And our media specialist is no longer full time in our building, so we don't have that consistent person running it. But um, what a school could do is have Google Hangouts on air, and the whole school could tune in to the streaming, or if they were on a, if they couldn't be there, they could watch it on the archive. But you could have like four classrooms, you know, each day saying, hey, what's going on in third grade this week? Or let's check out the music room. What can you look forward to? And you could really have a short little broadcast um, once a week or, you know, a couple times a week to do your news this way. That makes me about the whole setup and the time to set up with the cameras feeding in and nothing to it. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, there's pictures of fun tools too. I mean, I don't know them that well. But you put hats on people, and you can. Jennifer has to go a third up, and all of that. There's the toolboxes on the left side. Click on it. There you go. <laughs> Uh, the silly things happen. I mean, who knows though? I mean, maybe a child had to go ahead and give a, <laughs> a presentation about the princess. And I mean, you could do probably spontaneous story problem. Kids would have a little fun. head movement. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason that they can't. Okay, who, who are you now? And then it could be a little improv drama action. <laughs> and that's just in the toolbox. You could be a creepy clown. <laughs> so. And the ability to screen share is pretty great, too. You can share photos or share whatever's on your screen as well. So whether it's a newscast or whether you're working with two or three classrooms and sharing group documents or you know, working together on a project, the ability to do it all in here is pretty simple. It doesn't take too long to catch on at all. Great. I mean, as long as, I mean, sometimes the, it's the connectivity that with the screen share sometimes doesn't really work out well, but for the most part, let's see, could I do screen share? It would open up. I could probably, let's see if it will work. Oh, do you see that? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I just pulled up a, a image, and this was one of the survey questions for BYOD. Do you get the fact that she does now have one room in her classroom? It's not everything. Mm -hmm. She does BYOD on a regular basis and kind of works it in. And so that's what's remarkable about what she's doing. That we got we just happened to show that day that she was invited on the rent. But because she was comfortable enough to make you know, that wasn't what we were able to do, right? It was after several attempts that made her comfortable enough to bring it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I didn't ask her anything about BYOD and not just Google Hangout. It's really an amazing program. Yeah, and, and I have ASUS and all the other HP. All working together. Um, I guess the other thing is the, the film itself. Um, the film is uh, we really dig the district. We need to convince whether it's parents, administrators, you know, people in government that this is a good idea. We created this film as a tool to help do that. So whether it's a PTO meeting or whether it's, you know, an administration is, has to convince the school board, um, community group meetings, if you're trying to get a tech bond pass, if, you know, anybody's interested or know anybody who could use it. Um, we have a website, lookonlearning.org, and the film's available. And, that's what we really created it for, is to just help get this whole conversation moving along. And I mean, we have also the teachers uh, blog on the website about you know more specific things like Google Hangout or what they're doing in their class or apps that they use or things like that. So if you're interested in getting more information that way, you can do it through the website or the bigger picture of just you know, moving the conversation, convincing who needs to con be convinced that's a good idea. You may that's want to watch the, the rest of it. We have about 10 minutes left. The film. If there's, yeah, no more questions. If you're interested, we can play the rest of the film. <coughs> Sound good? Hey, Jennifer? I think we're going to watch the rest of the film, if that's all right. Yeah, that's great. Thank, Thank you guys so much. All right. Have fun. Wish we could all right. All right. Good luck with the rest of your uh, day. We will. All right. Bye. Bye.